Hello, everybody. Uh, I was going to say good morning, but whatever time it is for you, welcome. Um, we're reading through the book. This is more, more reading, more of an experience than reading. Mysticism. Uh, studying the Nature and Development of Spiritual Consciousness by Evelyn Underhill. And so I'm up on the trail. I got this set up ahead of time wasn't complicated just trust I encourage you to trust that you're here for a reason uh, my name is Dr. Cheryl Meyer I am a psychologist in my day job and I was just going to read this book for myself and I just was like let's read it for everyone else so that it's it's somewhere because I couldn't find it on audible or anything or anyway and so I started reading it for us and then <laughs> we're like 58 video, 50, 58 hours later. And then I put it into a podcast for the people that don't go on YouTube and stuff. So welcome to the podcast if you're just listening to this. We're in beautiful nature. I like having a serene, we're up high. I like having a serene background when I can, right? This is just life. So, um, I'm just reading Psalm 90 today. Teach us to number our days. Teach us to understand, to do these things that are worthy in this life. You know, this is, I'm, I'm very careful with my time. And um, anyway, understanding this, this we, we, I've been reading C.S. Lewis's Mere Christianity again, and I welcome all religions here, right? I just welcome you, you as a soul. Um, but he was saying most people forget that we're eternal. We, we're eternal and we keep getting caught up in these temporal things. And it's like God is doing something far greater in us regardless uh, for our eternal nature. And it's not ours to judge what he's doing in other people. That's just what's coming into my heart. Right? Peace and love. Always and forever. What was the song? I was getting a song on the way up here, but I can't. Oh, oh yeah, I was getting Lenny Kravitz's song. Uh, I'm like, he had it right in that moment. Let love rule. You know, God is love. But I'm not trying to tell you what to do. Let's just study mysticism and maybe we'll finish this book today. Maybe not. We're in this chapter called The Unitive Life and we're on the last couple pages of it and then we go into the conclusion. Yeah, I think we're going to finish today. So I appreciate so much all of you guys who have been here on this whole journey. Wow. If not, you've missed a lot of amazing, amazing moments, moments just with God. Like, it doesn't even matter about the book, but the book is very informative to help us. Um, she doesn't go into any occult. She just stays on this narrow path of describing what is this mystic path that we're all called on and what did it look like in other people's lives. And I want, I wanted, I, I didn't know, but I, I always want this before. I did know that I wanted this, but I didn't know that this was going to be it. Uh, Evelyn Underhill inspired and influenced C.S. Lewis, but just a path for us to just be able to be open and not worry about what's the next person that person. I have, I just have to guard my eyes and my ears so much that it's nice to just relax and Anyway, but always use the discernment with whatever anyone's teaching. Okay, and so in Psalm 90, it was saying, God, bless our handiwork. And that's us. We are God's poema, God's artwork. We are that. And of course, all of these videos, I pray that God, you will be with every single person that Evs has ever watched any of these videos whether it's one or millions, whatever it is, God, be in their hearts. Give us wisdom and revelation. Give us understanding of your mystic path. Give us understanding of what you're doing in our soul or just help us to surrender to what you're doing. If I have all of the knowledge and the wisdom of the angels, but, um, you know, all knowledge and can speak the tongues of angels, but I have not love, it's nothing. That's First Corinthians, I think, 13. But it's like, God, give us love. Give us your divine agape love, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. 
bless you and keep you and make his face shine on you. I never say any of this kind of stuff, so I just trust that it's coming up for a reason. I wish you so much love. I'm so glad you've been here. And even if this is your first one, like trust it, right? And the last one, I just met these guys on this trail and I was like, oh, I hope, I hope these videos get to them. As I do for all of our hearts, I just want our hearts to be warmed. You know, Van Gogh said that he's like this fire that he would love to give to other people that they can warm themselves by, right? This is a, was a little chilly of, of a morning. Um, but no one bought his paintings except for his brother until after he died, you know? So don't look with your outward eyes. Just keep giving from your heart and keep showing up and, and let the chips fall where they may and trust that God will will make a harvest for the crop that you're putting out um, into this world because all of us have gifts and we're all meant to activate these gifts all right no matter how small it looks right just reading a book on a hill all right uh okay so she was she was just about to read the most lovely and real, most human and most near to us. All of these descriptions of the celestial exhilaration. I had to read some of it, so I wouldn't leave you guys on a complete cliffhanger with the last one, right? Um, it says, um, so I'll reread that paragraph and then we'll go on. But the most lovely and real, most human and most near to us of all these descriptions of the celestial exhilaration, which mystic surrender brings in its train is the artless, unintentional self-revelation of St. Catherine of Genoa, whose inner and outer lives in their balanced wholeness provide us with one of our best standards by which to judge the right proportions of the mystic way. One second. All right. <sighs> My dishwasher broke, so I'm, I'm, I have, I have this on to get calls, so we might be interrupted, but we'll go back. I just trust it'll all work out. Um, anyway. So the self... So she was this balanced person where, um, by which to judge the right proportions of the mystic way. Here, the whole essence of the unitive life is summed up and presented to us by one who lived it upon heroic levels and who was in fruition and activity in rest and in work not only a great active and a great ecstatic but one of the deepest gazers into the secrets of eternal love which the history of christian mysticism contains all right yet perhaps there is no passage in the works of these same mystics which comes to so unexpected so startling a conclusion as this in which saint catherine with a fearless simplicity, shows to her fellow men the nature of the path that she has trodden and the place that she has reached. When she says in one of her reported dialogues, and, and though the tone be impersonal, it is, clearly pers it is clearly personal experience which speaks. The loving kindness of God calls a soul from the world. Hold on, let me come back. I was so in our moment. And then, anyway, this is life. This is life. When we get pulled out, trust that God can pull you right back in. I was reading part of this book called The Cloud of Unknowing, and he was just like, it was a, a anonymous, but I think it was a he, a monk, that, a male monk that wrote it. It was just like, just keep, your job is to guard, to keep your gaze on God, that's all. He'll do the rest in you. Just guard yourself from anything, everything, like positive, negative, anything that pulls you away from giving yourself fully to God, right? To divine love. <sighs> I 
when she says in one of her reported dialogues, and though the tone be impersonal, it is clearly, pers uh, it is clearly personal experience which speaks, quote, the loving kindness of God calls the soul from the world. He finds, it's full, he finds it full of vices and sins. Sin is just means to miss the mark of perfect love. Hamartia, to miss the mark, you're not on the bullseye. And so he's like, shoot it over this way, come back over this way, this is love. Not that, not that, and not that, this is love, right? So God calls a soul from the world. He finds it full of vices and sins. And first he gives it an instinct for virtue and then urges it to perfection, and then by infused grace, leads it to true self-knotting, N-A-U-G-H-T-I-N-G. You know, I quoted, I quoted, I did somebody to love a whole live teaching on it. But the first line of that, uh, of that Queen song by Freddie Mercury is, each morning I get up, I die a little. It's the same as Jesus says, in order to be my disciple, you must take up your cross every day and die to yourself. Like he's, he's just reiterating Christ's words in that one lyric. I'm not saying all of it, but I did a teaching what, what was coming through me by the Holy Spirit. Um, as, so that song can teach us to not be afraid, to have this heroic path and die a little every day. You know, not everyone does this perfectly, but... Each person gives us a little clue because all of our souls, God's calling it, right? And then urges it to perfection. And are we going to, with our free will, he doesn't make us do that. God is beyond he and she. God doesn't make us do this. But, And then by infused grace leads it to true self-knotting and at least to true transformation. And at last, sorry, and at last to true transformation. Wow, this is so showing on my heart yesterday. I want to ask this woman if I have permission to remix what she was saying because it was exactly this in her own life how god totally transformed her she was an alcoholic for over 20 years this woman was just sharing publicly and so i won't say her until i get permission but and god just got her sober from from the two things she was doing that and um, other other stuff I won't say because anyway in case there's kids around but anyway the God it's really simple just surrender yourself to God and and he will show you the path of sobriety now I'm not saying that as a psychologist you know I'm I am a psychologist in my day job because um, you know saying that as a person as just what I see I'm also anyway I see it in her life. I know her, right? Anyway, it's amazing, people's testimonies. And this noteworthy order serves God to lead the soul along the way. The way with a capital W, right? But when the soul is knotted and transformed, you know, you're letting go of yourself, not affying yourself. She's British, right? And transformed, then of herself, she neer, neither works, nor speaks, nor wills, nor feels, nor hears, nor understands. Neither has she of herself the feeling of outward or inward, where she may move. And in all things, it is God who rules and guides her without the mediation of any creature. And the state of this soul is then a feeling of such utter peace and tranquility that it seems to her that her heart and her bod bodily being and all both within and without is immersed in an ocean of utmost peace, right? Look at the sky. With a love as big as the sky. I got this song once when I, I met this friend of mine. It reminded me of this camp song, right? Oh, running bear, loved little white dove with a love as big as the sky, <laughs> with a love that would never die. <laughs> some people you just meet and you feel like you have a soul knowing with them and you just wish every bit of love for them in their hearts no matter no matter what it costs to you no matter if you never see them or whatever you just wish them love it's the true happiness of god it changes our inward being and heals every old wound right 
I mean, I wish that for you or else I wouldn't be doing this. I'd just be reading this by myself, cuddled in my bed already instead of getting up here. <laughs> it seemed six in the morning when I woke up, but it, the time changed, so. Um, uh, and the state of the soul is in a feeling of such utter peace and tranquility that it seems to her that her heart and her bodily being and all both within and without is immersed and an ocean of utmost peace, from whence she shall never come forth for anything that can befall her in this life. And she stays immovable, imperturbable, impassable, so much so that it seems to her in her human and her spiritual nature, both within and without, she can feel no other thing than sweetest peace. And she is so full of peace that though she press her flesh, her nerves, her bones, no other thing comes forth from them than peace. Then she says, all day for joy, such rhymes as these, making them according to her manner, right? Like, like watch my series on the princess and the cardi and the princess and the goblin. It's in both of them, but mostly in the princess and the goblin, the first one. Um, Curdy is the minor and he has to make up verses all the time from love from his heart in order to defeat the goblins that are around him in order to take authority if you understand what I'm talking about we're meant to walk in authority and so he came up with these verses but let's hear hers I haven't read this yet oh great it's in French or something um voi tu che tu mostre et mostrio Presto che cosa e dio. Maybe it's Spanish. Passe non trovo ci de lui se partio. Okay, I think she put it at the bottom. Let's see. Oh, thank God. All right. Well, I was going to say, sometimes I say, um, someone translated for us. Sometimes she doesn't. Dost thou wish that I should show all God's being? Thou mayest know. Peace is not found of those who do not with him go. If you don't give your heart and soul to me and life will always be. Love ye and rose, right? I wear these roses, rise, open your soul eyes. I do everything to remind me to stay on this path because I'm, it's, it's this, it's St. Paul said that, the sin that so easily entangles us and pulls us off. And so <laughs> I'll read what she said again in that, in that rhyme for us. That was Edith Piaf, like I like, I think that's how you say her name, who wrote La Vie en Rose. Your life in rose, right? It's just, anyway. Uh, dost, dost thou wish that I should show all God's being thou mayest know? Peace is not found of those who do not with him go. That's from Vita e Datrina the life of I don't know Dotrina I don't know what that means maybe it's a person and so St. Catherine of Genoa is quoting this I think so because that's the end of the quote then says she all day for joy such rhymes as these right as the ones that I just gave you <laughs> with the love as big as the sky <laughs> running bear love little white dove I'm part Native American so I just loved that song <laughs> it's in my DNA you know with a love that couldn't die. <laughs> Even though it looks dead sometimes, right? You have to believe in resurrection power. It is so deep in my heart and soul, you guys. This is not to be played with. So if you're here, just understand you're in a sacred moment with another person and honor that. I encourage you. Or else be gone, <laughs> you know? Like at the, like anyway, in that movie. Oh, Roald Dahl's book. Wasn't that? No, not Raul Dahl's. Frank Baum, the Wizard of Oz. Like, be gone with you. <laughs> Watch out, our house is going to drop on you. <laughs> you know, I would wish no ill on anybody, but... Um, I did learn a prayer from someone from YouTube that does deliverance stuff, and he was just like, I command you to go to the foot of the cross and await your sentence in the name of Jesus Christ. And so I say that a lot now. <laughs> um, I do say that a lot because that is the place of 
the the powers that that try to mar our course our soul's true path your heroic path right so okay then says she all day for joy such rhymes as these nursery rhymes one might almost call them so infantile so naive is their rhythm I was getting one this morning. I just wanted to do a one minute short. Maybe I will. But you'll get a, I'm checking if I ought to say it here. Okay, you'll get a brief preview here. It was just like, I kept, I keep getting this song over and over again. It was like, um, I learned it at camp as well when I was a kid. So I don't know who wrote this. So credit to them. Um, it goes something, it goes, birds in the sky sing their song to you, trees in the field lift their arms to you, I want to sing, I want to lift my arms to you. I want to praise you, Lord, much more than I do. I want to love you, Lord, much more than I do, you know, um. And so it's like I kept seeing, this is like a mini bush, but it's like I kept seeing the trees, these grand trees, and, and, and like not wanting to be jealous of trees, but it's, they're so simple and they get to just stand there and weather the course of time and have their hands up in worship, in worship. I've had weird mystical experience with trees and, and I can tell you, you don't have to believe me, but they're worshiping God. They're just praising God. It's like, it's like this slow molasses of, of light and they're praising God. You know, I don't, I mean, I guess, I, you know, I'm hearing in my inner, in my heart, like what C.S. Lewis said in the, in the line, the witch in the wardrobe, Mr. Beaver said it to the, the kid, the children, you know, who would, who would be once a king or queen of Narnia, always a king. But he said, um, there are good trees and bad trees, so I don't know. They were all made good in the beginning, though. God made everything and said it was good. So I don't know about how the bad trees come about. Anyway, I don't want to divide it right now. So just nursery rhymes, right? Naive in their rhythm. Who would have suspected this to be the secret manner of communion between the exalted soul of Catherine and her love with a capital L? That's God. How many of those who actually saw that great and able woman tirelessly laboring in the administration of our hospital who heard that profound and instinctive Christian Platonist. Yes, Plato. C.S. Lewis says it's all in Plato. <laughs> I'm like, someone was making fun of Socrates and I got so mad. I got, I almost got kicked out of my church because I got so mad at these people. And, and, you know, and so God can fight his battles. We don't have to fight all of them. I mean, I don't know which ones we're meant to fight, but it's, 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 it can't come from that place. I had to be corrected because um, anyway, <laughs> I didn't know where it was coming from. Like, but we can still have our own, our own baggage that we throw onto that. So just so you know, the instinctive Christian Platonist instructing her disciples and declaring the law of universal and heroic love. How many of these divined that Questa Santa Benedetta, she's not saying what that means. How many saints, Benet, how Questa, how many saints, uh, Santa Benedetta, Saint, Santa, San, Santa, Santa, Saint Nicholas, right? But Santa means Saint. Nicholas is, is Santa Claus, but Father Christmas, right? Um, Questa Santa ben, Benedetta, who seemed to them already something. I'm like, I don't know. I just got the feeling someone would be watching this. It's far from Christmas right now, but at Christmas. So Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> in Narnia, it was always winter and never Christmas, right? So I want Christmas every day. Christ Mass. You have Christ shining in your heart, right? You hold Christ sacred and live according to the way he lived and be transformed by him and the blood of Christ cover us and, and nurture us and, 
and transform us and make us perfect and make us perfect right now in God's eyes, right? We, we accept his perfection. Like, you choose that. Don't say that unless, unless you want to mean it. Ask God to help you want to mean it. Who seemed to them already, uh, I wish that for you, right? Who seemed to them already something more than earthly, a matter of solemn congratulation, a reverential approach. When to see reverential approach, that's what I was talking about earlier. Um, a monk who's sworn to chastity. Um, I was just reflecting on that this morning. I'm like, well, <laughs> um, uh, God, God can do the impossible, right? But this guy, Timothy Gallagher, Father Timothy Gallagher, taught me taught me that. I was at a live silent retreat with him, and he kept saying, like, with reverence, we're reading these these prayers of saints that it took their whole life for their lives to be transformed to be able to 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 form that prayer like always and forever again you know that's god saying i'll always and forever be here uh, i can transform you in this moment what no matter what is in your past no matter what i've got a love bigger than the sky right i'm so glad we get the sky right now he showed me a picture in my heart of this bench i'm on a bench i won't move the camera but so i was like all right i'll go and it's it's so odd to what's going on in this morning, but the, see, God was calling me for you. I, I trust that. Um, solemn, congratul... Okay, a matter... She, okay, there's something already, something more than earthly. Who seemed to them already something more than earthly. A matter of solemn congratulation and reverential approach went about her work with a heart engaged in no lofty speculations on eternity, no outpourings of mystic passion for the absolute, but saying all day for joy in a spirit of childlike happiness, gay and foolish little songs about her love. And then there's a question mark. But anyway, standing at the highest point of the mystic ladder, which can be reached by human spirits in this world of time and space, looking back upon the course of that slow interior alchemy, that noteworthy order of organic transformation by which her selfhood had been purged of imperfection, raised to higher levels, compelled at last to surrender itself to the all-embracing, all-demanding life of the real, with a capital R. This is St. Catherine's deliberate judgment on the relative and absolute aspects of mystic life, the, quote, noteworthy order, which we have patiently followed, the psychic growth, and rearrangement of character. She has a really beautiful footnote there, but anyway, I'll go on. I, I put the link to, so you can get the PDF of this because it's free. It was written in 1911 or published then. The visions and ecstasies, the joyous illumination and bitter pain, these but served to lead the soul along the way. In the mighty transvaluation of values which takes place when that way has at last been trod, these abnormal events sink to insignificance. For us, looking out wistfully along the pathway to reality, they stand out, it is true, as supreme landmarks by which we may trace the homeward course of pilgrim man, right? Like... Um, Simon and Garfunkel, Homeward Bound. I had a whole CD that I, I burned before with my own songs that I had bought, right? I think we could burn them. I don't know. Um, and I'm so careful about not doing anything that's, that's not, you know, that, that, that they allow. Um, but it was before we had iPods and we could bring those around. Anyway, um, but it was all songs about home, longing for home, right? Somewhere Over the Rainbow. I have that on my YouTube. I covered that. Um, I gave it to one of my friends when she lost a loved one. Anyway, it's all, it's all our hearts longing for home. God is our true home. We all came out of the same creator, right? I'm always like, right? We did. <laughs> like, I don't know if you remember that, but I remember this. <laughs> so, okay. So, oh, that we may trace the home by which we may trace the the homeward course of pilgrim man mankind man and woman the importance of their their study cannot be overrated 
for those who would study the way to that world, to that world from this, right? We're getting a trace from that world to this. All my videos are talking about this, so I don't need to go on and expand. I'm going to, I'm going to read the book. But the mystic safe, the mystic, but the mystic comma, safe in that silence where, silence where lovers lose themselves. His cheek on him who for his coming came. So that's a quote. Where lovers lose themselves, his cheek on him. Like I think of John all the time. You can enter into this scripture. John, the beloved disciple. The, I, I, I heard from other Christian mystics, the youngest of the disciples. You know, because anyway. Um, had his um, head on Christ's chest, on, the, on, the, on his heart, right? In, in an embrace on the Lord's Supper right before Jesus was going to die. He was going to lose him in the earthly realm, but he was going to come and com send the Holy, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. <laughs> I'm like, no, Jesus, don't, uh, don't leave. But he said it would be better for us. His cheek on him with a capital H, right? My rose. There's a rose, rise. Open your soul eyes. For who, who for his coming came remembers them no more. In the midst of his active work, his incessant spiritual creation, joy, and peace enfold him. He needs no stretched and sharpened intuition now, for he dwells in that, quote, most perfect form of contemplation, which consists in simple and perceived contact of the substance of the soul with that of the divine. The wheel of life has made its circle here at the last point of its revolution, the extremes of sublimity and simplicity are seen to meet. It has swept the soul of the mystic through periods of alternate stress and glory, tending ever to greater transcendence, greater freedom, closer contact with the supplier of true life, the capital S, right? That supplier, God. He emerges from that long and wondrous journey to find himself or herself, right? In rest and in work, a little child upon the bosom of the father. Oh, there's a psalm that says, I have, I come to you like a child at rest on its mother's knees. I have stilled my soul. John Michael Talbot, I think that's his name, sang a song like oh, from the Psalms. I come to you like a child at rest. I have stilled my soul completely. It's, it's, we're called to this, you guys. This is not out of the ordinary. We're called to this. Read the Psalms. The Holy Spirit speaks through those songs. There are songs from the Holy Spirit, direct from the Holy Spirit, to teach us how to encounter this deep mystic life that, that does, it's not on the surface, you guys. It's not on the surface. Um, a little child upon the bosom of the father in that most dear relation all feeling will and thought attain their end here all the teasing complications of our separated selfhood are transcended hence the eager striving the sharp vision are not wanted anymore in that mysterious death of selfhood on the summits which is the medium of eternal life heights meet the deeps right the heights there's mountains right behind and that's a valley right there supreme achievement and complete humility are one in a last brief vision a glimpse as overpowering to our common minds as dante's final intuition of reality to his exalted and courageous soul we see the triumphing spirit sent out before us the best that earth can offer stoop and strip herself of the insignia of wisdom and power, achieving the highest, she takes the lowest place. <laughs> Says that, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. St. John of the Cross, nada, 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 the ascent of Mount Carmel, nothing, nothing, nothing. I found that this couldn't do it, that couldn't do it. If I let go of everything and I have nothing, 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 right? This brings me to the heart of God. And Meister Eckhart, the German mystic from the 1300s said, when I empty myself, God has to fill that. God fills that because God is love, right? 
ask God how to do that. Possessed at last. So initiated. Okay. Achieving the highest, she takes the lowest place. Initiated into the atmosphere of eternity. United with the absolute. Possessed at last of the fullness of its life. The soul. self knotted becomes as a little child for of such is the kingdom of heaven right jesus said you must be like a little child that's the end of this book but i'm going to read the conclusion okay so i'm sure she has some great things to say and i hope we have time if we don't have time i think i'm just going to end end this wherever i end on the conclusion so this can be the last hour all right, that's my intuition. <laughs> um, we have traced conclusion, right? We have traced, as well as our limitations allow, the mystic way from its beginning to its end. You can read it yourself, you guys. It, I left the PDF link in all my other videos. We have seen the ever-changing, ever-growing human spirit emerging from the cave of illusion, enter into consciousness of the transcendental world. The pilgrim sets towards Jerusalem, pass through its gates and attain his home in the bosom of reality. For him, as we have learned from his words and actions, this journey and this end are all. Their overwhelming importance and significance swallow up of necessity every other aspect of life. <laughs> you know, Plato says that. He says the study of the soul is really all that's necessary. So I'm like, all right, I, that's where I am. So you have to look up that quote. I've said it somewhere else or look it up. Um, it's, it's in my patent. Huh, I know I quoted it there, but if you remind me, if someone reminds me in the comments, if it's not there, I will put it there. If someone really wants that quote, I'll look it up for us. You just say, say what quote you're referencing. Cause I won't remember what I said in the video. Probably say that Plato quote about, um, studying the soul, but she just said, anyway, uh, of necessity, um, this end are their, their overwhelming importance is insignificant swallow up of necessity, every other aspect of life. Now, I'm not saying just sit here and study, but Jesus said it in Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his right wayness, this right path. That's what this is we're studying. And all these things shall be added unto you as well. Um, and so, C.S. Lewis says, aim for heaven and you'll get earth thrown in. Aim for earth and you won't get heaven or earth. Right? And so it's saying the same thing. It's not just to study these things, but live according to our soul nature. Ask God how, 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 like save my soul. Ah, uh, and I'm not saying all the lyrics in the song, but I was with my friend th last night and we were just having a sparkling water and um, Jack and Diane started playing and my friends were in this 80s band and they used to, this other 80s band that I knew in Montreal. Hi, Karan and Costa and, and Bob. Um, they they sing um they sing that song but it's like um I'm sorry that line just came to me little ditty about jack and diane um uh, doing the best they can um life goes on long after the thrill of living is gone anyway it's talking about it said something about eternal life in that sorry i heard it last night it was so beautiful with this but now i can't remember um okay um uh, now at the end of our inquiry we are face to face with the question what do these things mean for us for ordinary unmystical men right not all of us are mystical because Jesus said we will all worship there will be a time he said to the woman at the well you can look it up I think it's John 6 there will be a time right before that maybe it's before that um when people worship in spirit and in truth and because God is spirit, so we must know him in spirit. That lyric was so clear to me. Now it's not so, oh, well, I'll go on. Um, now at the end of our inquiry, we are face to face with the question. Yeah. What do the, what are the ordinary, what are their links with that concrete world of appearance in which we are held fast? with that mysterious ever-changing life which we are forced to lead what do these great and strange adventures of the spirit tell us as to the goal of that lesser adventure of life on which we are set right we're here 
I'm here at my station all night. That's what Elliot sang in a song that wasn't released called Dancing on the Highway. So come on by if you feel like. Come by, I'm here at my station doing my duty until I die, right? That was his, that was his goal at least, you know. I'm sure at one time that was Freddie Mercury's as well. You guys, I, I urge you, do not let anything get you off this path, the path of the true way of love. You see these great, beautiful people and, and who, who are we to say if they got off the path or not? Like that's between them and God. I pray salvation and, and eternal life in heaven for, for everyone on this earth that ever lived. I want everyone to know that love, not anyone to go without that. I, I've seen hell. I've experienced it in my own life and it's nothing i wouldn't want it on my worst enemies worse it's worse than any torture you can imagine and it was i i read i think in c.s lewis or somewhere it's maybe in the 11 in my blessed theophylact from the 1100s that hell was only meant for the angels that chose to fall because they had free choice it was never meant for a man i mean we have free choice but it's like a gift every it's really complicated <laughs> it's a gift every time we make a free choice but god god doesn't force us to, to choose not hell. <sighs> he gives us Jesus. And I, I keep seeing Jesus lately on the cross. It's like he could have taken those nails off. Like I could shut this video down and not, not, not be reading us this. But it's like he didn't take those nails. I'm not saying I'm Christ. Like Christ is in me and he's loving you through me. But I'm not going to deny that. But he didn't take those nails off. It's like he had to die. So study the mystery. He had to die because he chose to give us eternal life. Like, look into that. Otherwise, he's not stupid. Why would he let himself stay on the cross? When they came to get him, they said, we came to get Jesus Christ. What? And he says, and which of you is Jesus Christ? I am. And they all fell back. All of them fell back. Like, he didn't even need to call the legion of angels, but he could have. Like in the Old Testament, we see the angels come through and just kill all of these armies. He didn't have to go to the cross, you guys. Understand, enter that mystery. I'm I don't know why it's coming up for us, but that's what I've been seeing lately. Is like, no, I look up, those hands are still there. The nails are still in them. And he showed the mark print of them when he came back to the disciples for a reason, for a reason. If you're doubting like Thomas, then, then touch, touch his hands. Ask him to touch, ask him to give you the faith that you don't need to touch his hands. But if you need to, or if you think you need to, ask him with faith, ask God. Jesus said, blessed are those who believe this without actually physically touching. But Thomas gave us his witness, you guys. These people, they're 11 witnesses of the apostles and 12 with Mary. Mary, Luke got all of Mary's testimony. Just study this stuff, you guys. Don't just dismiss it because our world says, oh, that's dumb. That's not cool. That's outdated. That's the enemy of our souls trying to trick you. He's a deceiver. He's a liar from the beginning. Anyway, um, what are their links with that concrete world of appearance? You know, that's why I'm like, rise, open your soul eyes. Don't just look at these with these outer eyes. The appearance, I'll keep going. Well, I plan to keep going. In which we are held fast with that mysterious, ever-changing life, which we, are, which we are forced to lead. What do these great and strange adventures of the spirit tell us? as to the goal of that lesser adventure of life on which we are set, as to our significance, our chances of freedom, our relation with the absolute, with capital A, that's God, right? Do they merely represent, represent, right? The eccentric performances of a rare psychic type are the matchless declarations of the contemplatives only the fruits of unbridled imaginative genius as unrelated to reality as music to the fluctuations of, of the stock exchange, right? Who, who knows? Maybe music does go to that too. Anyway, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's like the love of money is the root of all evil, not money. But Or are they the supreme manifest... Math is beautiful, I'm sure. Or, or, or are they the supreme manifestation of a power which is inherent in our life? Reports of observations made upon an actual plane of being which transcends and dominates our normal world of sense. The question is vital, for unless the history of the mystics can touch and light up some part of this normal experience, take its place in the general history of man, 
contributes something towards our understanding of his nature and destiny, its interest for us can never be more than remote, academic, and unreal. It has to be meaningful. Far from being academic or unreal, that history, I think, vital for the deeper understanding of the history of humanity. It shows us, upon high levels, the psychological process to which every self which desires to rise to the perception of reality must submit the formula under which man's spiritual consciousness, be it strong or weak, must necessarily unfold. In the great mystics, we see the highest and widest development of that consciousness to which the human race has yet attained. We see its growth exhibited to us on a grand scale, perceptible of all men, the stages of its slow transcendence, of the sense world, marked by episodes of splendor and of terror, which are hard for common men to accept or understand as a part of the organic process of life. You can look in my eyes and you can see, I'm not making it up. I have experienced hell and, and be it visions or be it experiences in my life. I'll leave that in mystery, but I, I don't recommend it. And this is why my heart is so, so pressed upon to continue and persevere and persevere. Like I've been doing this YouTube channel for for four years and not got paid anything. And I don't know if I'll ever get paid and it doesn't matter now. Now God has like purified my heart so much in this. It's like, I thought he was wanting me to do it for my job, but I don't care anymore because I just want souls to be saved, right? And so like and share, right? To all of those, you don't want to go to hell. <sighs> And they might not all get it through this means, right? But as if everyone is doing it through your own creativity, through what God is calling in your heart to do, don't doubt that. Put on a camera and do it. It doesn't have to be a camera, but to create your song. It could be a classical music piece that just reminds people's souls of heaven. It, it wakes us up. We're all, wake up yourself. And we wake up other people just by being awake as well. Anyway, it's not all from doing, it's from being. Be ye transformed. <laughs> There's a verse, that, isn't that a verse? Anyway, you can write the, the reference for that verse. If it's be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that your noos, N-O-U-S, it's more than your mind. Your perception, hello. <laughs> okay, anyway. But the germ of that uh, same transcendent life, the spring of the amazing energy which enables the great mystic to rise to freedom and dominate his world, is latent in all of us. Hello, she just said it. An integral part of our humanity. Where the mystic has a genius for the absolute, we have each a little buried talent, some greater, some less. And the growth of this talent, the spark of the soul, once we permit its emergence, will conform in little and according to its measure. Uh, to those laws of organic growth, right? Just like these plants, they'll grow, they'll grow, a activate them. I, I wouldn't get better at guitar or singing unless I practice. And a lot of songs I'm not singing that well or playing that well, it doesn't matter because I'm still practicing and I'm still showing up and that's what I'm showing in my videos. Um, anyway, organic growth, those inexorable conditions of, tra my videos are just a a, a metaphor. I don't care. I'm not trying to promote my videos. I'm just saying they're a metaphor for us, for each of us, for our lives. Or a metaphor? Is that, is that, anyway, those inexorable conditions of transcendence, which we've found to govern the mystic way. Every person then who awakes, awakens to consciousness of a reality, which transcends the normal world of sense, however small, weak, and perfect that consciousness may be, is but of necessity is put of necessity upon a road which follows at low levels the path which the mystic treads at high levels, right? We're high up on this mountain right now. Jesus went up to the mountain and taught, blessed are the Beatitudes. Look at those. He's teaching on a mountain. Those are high truths. When it says he went up to a mountain, he went for a reason. It might be his soul called him there because he's teaching high truths. Um, uh, which the mystic treads at high levels. The success with which he follows this way, or she, or he, to freedom and full life will depend on the intensity of his love and will, his capacity for self-discipline, his steadfastness and courage. <laughs> you know, or your visions of hell and you're not wanting, you just have love and you don't want anyone to experience that ever. <laughs> I don't ever want to go backwards. I pray to God, please don't, don't. 
Protect our souls, protect our souls from ever going backwards, only forwards, God. No more sin. Remember that? Remember that that video we did? Um, um, his, his, her, her capacity for self-discipline, her steadfastness and courage. It will depend on the generosity and completeness of his outgoing passion for absolute beauty. Remember Dostoevsky said, in the end, and I believe this so strongly, the world will be saved by beauty. <laughs> Always and forever. <laughs> God is beauty. Truth is beauty. Love is beauty. Roses are beauty. His smile is beauty. Christ in us is beauty. Being clumsy at creativity is beauty. This is all beauty. <laughs> Recognize true beauty. Charm is deceitful. And outer beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. <laughs> That means has awe for God. That's Proverbs 31, the Proverbs 31 woman. And our souls are the woman. So you men can understand our souls are meant to be developed like that woman as well. I mean, I ask God. Like, you can verify that with God. I, I'm not trying to. God is, God is, Meister Eckhart said God is both mother and father. So look up that quote, right? I'm quoting another Christian. All right. So you're not just trusting on what, I, what I've experienced real beauty, right? It says, it will depend on the generosity and completeness of his or her, I'm adding her, outgoing passion for absolute beauty, absolute goodness, or absolute truth. But if he move at all, he will move through a series of states which are, in their own small way, strictly analogous, analogous to those experienced by the greatest contemplative on his journey towards that union with God, which is the term of the Spirit's ascent towards its home. You guys, I really am encouraging you to listen to all of the two George MacDonald books I've done so far. Our next book, I have it here, is a George MacDonald book. Um, and, and I didn't want to carry it in my backpack because it's just another book. But I got in my intuition, nope, leave it in. And I didn't know why because I didn't know I'd be mentioning it. At the back of the North Wind, right? The Holy Spirit is Ruach HaKodesh, the holy breath of God, Numa. And that's Hebrew and Greek, but it's like the breath, the wind. And so this is a beautiful book and it's free for me to read. So I'm going to continue on. Well, that's my plan as long as I'm alive, right? So um, I pray um, St. Patrick's breastplate. I pray that for all of you guys and I pray it for myself. Keep us. Christ be with us. Christ above us. Christ in front of us. Christ behind us. Christ beside us. Christ within us. Christ in, in hearts of all who love us. Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Anyway, um, I have it. I have it on my YouTube. You can watch that prayer. I, I was saying it for my friends, and I just put it so we have res all these resources are here. It's a, it's a shield prayer. It's a protective prayer that St. Patrick wrote because he had to go through a lot of adversity and faced death. Any soldier, I was listening to this woman named Christy Jesse, and she was saying any soldier knows that death might, might happen. It might happen. <laughs> That's take up your cross every day. It's like it, it might for real happen on this earth, but God protect us, right? And so we finish finish our course and activate all the gifts that are put within you. Okay, so um, by the greatest contemplative on his journey towards that union with God, which is the term of the Spirit's ascent towards its home, homeward bound, right? There's no place like home. There isn't. Home is God. That's the creator from which we came, the oneness. As the embryo of physical man, be he saint or savage, passes through the same stages of initial growth, so too with spiritual man. When the new birth, right? Christ said you have to be born again. He said this to Nicodemus. Read John 3. Um, read all of John and all of the red letters of Jesus. And you'll see all these truths are all there. They're hidden in plain sight for us. Uh, when the new birth takes place in him, the new life process of his deeper self begins. The normal individual, no less than the mystic, will know that spiral ascent towards higher levels, those violent oscillations of consciousness between light and darkness. Oh, the, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Meditate on Psalm 23. I'm giving you all these things. I'm not giving you. God's giving you all of these tools that are here and here and here and here. Write them all down. Write your own book that has the spiritual tools that you've needed to get through all the ups and downs, right? St. Francis de Sales talks about it a lot. 
um, Jean-Pierre de Cassade in Abandonment to Divine Providence quote St. Francis de Sales talking about getting nosegays, these little flowers, bit, bunches of flowers every day. Give us this day our daily bread. So you can smell the beauty and let it last throughout the day of like, God, uh, be near me. You know, that's, that's a song, be near me, be near, right? And so you just say these little phrases of, of like flowers that you, you know, you put in your little pocket, like men used to have, gentlemen, in their pot, true gentlemen, right? In their pockets. So you're always smelling the flower of God. It's always present. Jesus just gave us that breath. God did. And I mean, anyway, Jesus is God, but you don't, you don't have to, I'm not, don't get irritated when I say that. Like, that's just my knowing. But anyway, God is so patient with us. God is so loving. God is love. You know, embrace that at least. Um, towards these higher levels, these violent oscillations of consciousness between light and darkness, those odd mental disturbances, abrupt invasions from the subliminal region, and the disconcerting glimpses of truth which accompany the growth of the transcendental powers. Though he may well interpret them in other than mystic sense, in other than the mystic sense, you know, you might interpret them in math sense, he too will be impelled to drastic self-discipline, to a deliberate purging of his eyes that he may see and receiving a new vision of the world, will be spurred by it to a total self-dedication and active surrender of his whole being to that aspect of the infinite, which he has perceived. He too will endure in little the psychic upheavals of the spiritual adolescence, will be forced to those sacrifices which every form of genius demands. You know, people that play piano eight hours a day in order to play Rachmaninoff. He will know, according to his measure, the dreadful moments of lucid self-knowledge, the counterbalancing ecstasy of an intuition of the real, with a capital R. More and more, as we study and collate all the available evidence, this fact, this law is borne in on us, that the movement of human consciousness, when it obeys its innate tendency to transcendence, is always the same. There's only one road from appearance to reality. Quote, man pass on, but the states are permanent forever. That's, I think she's talking about, Plato talks about the real is there. These are the shadow lands. She has states capitalized as um, the states of being or whatever, the, the, the real. I do not care whether the consciousness be that of artists or musicians striving to catch and fix some aspect of the heavenly light or music and denying all other aspects of the world in order to vote, devote themselves to this or the humble servant of science, purging his intellect that he may look upon her secrets with innocence of eye, whether the higher reality be perceived in the terms of religion, beauty, suffering, of human love, of goodness, or of truth. However widely these forms of transcendence may seem to differ, um, the mystic experience is the key to them all. All in their different ways are exhibitions here and now of the eternal, extensions of man's consciousness, which involve calls to heroic endeavor, incentives to the remaking of character about new and higher centers of life. Through each, man may rise to freedom and take his place in the great movement of the universe, may, quote, understand by dancing that which is done. I'm praying at the same time, right? <sighs> each brings the self Lewis Howe is coming to my mind for some reason. I'm just wishing um, um, that, that he gets this or he already has it. I don't know. He just keeps showing up on my Twitter feed. And I don't know why. Like, one of his did and then I responded to it. But anyway, I wish everybody love. I, I don't know. I don't know about what other people are doing all. I, I, anyway, I have so many fasts from YouTube and, and other places that it's like, I'm just, I'm just stay focused, right? Do, do. Um, do what you are called to do. Each brings the self who receives its revelation in good faith, does not check it by self-regarding limitations, to a humble acceptance of the universal law of knowledge, the law that we behold, quote, we behold that which we are. We, there's a law. Okay, we behold that which we are. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, is what how Jesus said it. Wow, wow, okay. And hints that, quote, only the real can know reality. Awakening, discipline, enlightenment, self-surrender, and union are the essential process of life's response to this fundamental fact, the conditions of our attainment of being, the necessary formula under which alone our consciousness of any of these fringes of eternity, any of these aspects of the transcendent can unfold, develop, 
attain to freedom and full life. We are then one and all the kindred of the mystics. We're kindred of them. They're kindred spirits of us. And it is by dwelling upon this kinship, by interpreting, you know, the great cloud of the saints. The, 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 we say that all the time. Every mass we say that. The great company of all of the saints. We're all in that. Um, by interpreting, so far as we may, inter interpreting, their great declarations in the light of our own little experience that we shall learn to understand them best. Strange and far away though they seem, they are not cut off from us by some impassable abyss. They belong to us. They are our brethren, like our brothers and sisters. The giants, the heroes of our race, not those kind of giants. They're, they're, they're true giants of heart and soul, right? The, the heroes of our race as the achievement of genius belongs not to itself only, but also to the society that brought it forth. As theology declares that the merits of the saints avail for all. The merits of the saints avail for all. Remember St. Teresa of Calcutta said, we're all called to be saints. It's in the, it's in the Bible somewhere. And so the merit, your merits avail everybody. I've said that so many times. Everything good that you do in your life is for, is for the whole world right? No pressure. And I don't know about our evils, how they tear down the world. So I call us, I invite us to love as God invites me, as in God invites all of us. Love as I have loved you. Jesus said, that's it. Here's my new commandment. Love as I have loved you. So don't judge people. You don't know how God's working in their lives. Just trust that he's working in their lives and, and give them to God. Say, this is a job for Jesus. I give them to you then if you're exasperated by someone. <laughs> like ourselves, right? I'm a job for Jesus. Um, so because of the solidarity of the human family, the supernal accomplishment of the mystics is ours also. Their attainment is the earnest money of our eternal life. You know, the down payment of our eternal life. To be a mystic is simply to participate here and now in that real and eternal life in the fullest, deepest sense, which is possible to man. It is to share as a free and conscious agent, not a servant, but as a son in the joyous travail of the universe, its mighty onward sweep through the pain and glory towards its home in God. This gift of sonship, this power and daughtership, you know, right? This power of free, we're, we're all sons in Christ. He's the first son. Anyway, um, because the firstborn gets the inheritance and we get it all through Christ. It's, it's so mystical and beautiful, but it's real, right? This power of the free cooperation, cooperation, you're cooperating with these, in, in the world process is man's greatest honor, the ordered sequence of states, the organic development whereby his consciousness is detached from illusion and rises to the mystic freedom which conditions, instead of being conditioned by its normal world, is the way he must tread if that sonship is to be attained. Only by this deliberate fostering of his deeper self, this transmutation of the elements of character, can he reach those levels of consciousness upon which he hears and responds to the measure whereto the world keeps time on their great pilgrimage towards the Father's heart. I just know the more I read, I'm going to have to run back, but that's okay, because I have to be back to take my kid to school. The mystic act of union, that joyous loss of the transfigured self in God, which is the crown of man's conscious ascent towards the absolute, is the contribution of the individual to this, the destiny of the cosmos. The mystic knows that destiny. It is laid bare to his lucid vision, as plain to him or her, right, as our puzzling world of form and color is to normal sight. He is that, quote, hidden child of the eternal order, an initiate of the secret, secret place plan. It is your initiate of the secret plan. Like I said that at the beginning, I think. Hence, whilst all creation groaneth and travaileth, slowly moving, I mean, the beginning of all these videos are all my other videos. Um... I got that sense that you're all being initiated. Welcome. Yay. Hence, whilst all creation groaneth and travaileth, that's a quote from St. Paul, slowly moving under the spur of blind desire towards that consummation in which alone it can have rest. He runs eagerly along the pathway to reality. He is the pioneer of life on its age-long voyage to the one with a capital O. And, and shows us in his attainment the meaning and value of that life. This meaning, the secret plan of creation, flames out had we eyes to see from every department of existence. Its exultant declarations come to us in all great music. Its wild magic is the life of all romance. Yay. <laughs> its law, the law of love. Its substance of the beautiful, 
the energizing cause of the heroic. It lights, I need a hero. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to see her, um, her melody, right? Okay, that's a quote. Um, there's a song called that. I'm holding out for a hero. Bonnie, I forgot her name, sorry. Um, put it in the comments if you remember. Um, we are that, we are that, so we don't need that. Christ is already our hero and Christ can be in us, so you don't need it externally. <laughs> um, but but it's calling you to be that, right? Anyway, the Holy Spirit gives me songs. She knows that I, I, I listen to songs from the Holy Spirit. It lights the altar of every creed. It runs like ichor in the arteries of the universe. All men's dreams and diagrams concerning a transcendent perfection near him yet intangible, a transcendent vitality to which he can attain. Whether he calls these objects of desire, God, grace, being, spirit, beauty, pure idea, are but translations of his deeper self's intuition of its destiny, clumsy, fragmentary hints at the all-inclusive living absolute which that deeper self knows to be real, the supernal thing, the adorable substance of all that is, the synthesis of wisdom, power, and love, and man's apprehension of it, his slow remaking in its interest, his union with it at last. This is the theme of mysticism, that twofold extension of consciousness which allows him communion with its transcendent and imminent aspects is, in all its gradual process, the mystic way. It is also the crown of human evolution, the fulfillment of life, the liberation of personality from the world of appearance, its entrance into the free, creative life of the real. Further, Christians, further, Christians may well remark that the psychology of Christ, as presented to us in the Gospels, is of a piece with that of the mystics. In its pains and splendors, its dual character of action and fruition, it reflects their experience upon the supernal plane of more abundant life. Thanks to this fact, for them the ladder of contemplation, that ladder which medieval thought counted as an instrument of the passion, passion with a capital P, Christ passion, discerning it as an essential, as essential, as essential, like as essential to us, to the true salvation of man, stretches without a break from earth to the empyrean. It, it leans against the cross. It leads to the secret rose. Wow, I don't, I don't know much about that. I mean, not consciously. <laughs> okay, there's one more page after this. So just, I encourage you to bear with me. Um, it leads to the secret rose. By it, the ministers of goodness, truth, and beauty go, it's, there was one page after this. Well, I mean, that's like three pages, but By it, the ministers of goodness, truth, and beauty go up and down between the transcendent and the apparent world, seen then from whatever standpoint we may choose to adopt, whether of psychology, philosophy, or religion, the adventure of the great mystics intimately concerns us. It is the master key to man's puzzle, a master key, a master key to man's puzzle. By its help, he may explain much in his mental makeup, in his religious constructions, in his experiences of li experience of life. In all these departments, he perceives himself to be climbing slowly and clumsily, right? Upward, like I said, I, didn't, I don't use the word clumsy very often, towards some attainment yet unseen. The mystics, ex expert mountaineers, go before him and show him if he cares to learn the way to freedom, to reality, to peace. He cannot rise in this, his earthly existence, to the awful and solitary peak veiled in the cloud of unknowing. That's what I've been reading lately. I was gonna recommend that earlier. Really, because you, you unknow all this other stuff. When she was saying self knotting, I kept thinking the cloud of unknowing. That's what I was reading yesterday. Where they meet that, quote, death of the summit. That's what I was saying that uh, anonymous monk wrote for us. Which is declared by them to be the, the gate of perfect life. But if he choose to profit by their explorations, he may find his level, his place within the eternal order. He may rise to freedom, live the, quote, independent spiritual life. Consider once more the mystic way as we have traced it from its beginning. To what does it tend if not to this? It began by the awakening within the self of a new and embryonic consciousness, a consciousness of divine reality, as opposed to the illusory sense world in which she was immersed, humbled, awed by the august possibilities that then revealed to her, that self retreated into the cell of knowledge and there labored to adjust herself to the eternal order which she had perceived, stripped herself of all that opposed it, disciplined her energies, purified the organs of sense, 
remade in accordance with her intuitions of reality, the eternal hearing and seeing were revealed to her, were revealed in her, in her, the soul. She, she uses her for the soul and him for all of mankind usually in this. She opened her eyes upon a world still natural, but no longer illusory, since it was perceived to be illuminated by the uncreated light. She knew then the beauty, the majesty, the divinity of the living world of becoming, which holds in its in its meshes every living thing. She had transcended the narrow rhythm by which common men perceive, but one of its many aspects escaped the machine-made universe presented by the cinema, cinematograph, cinematograph, cinematograph of sense and part, participated in the great life of the all. Reality came forth to her since her eyes were clean, cleansed to see it, not from some strange far off and spiritual and spiritual country, but gently from the very heart of things. Thus lifted to a new level, she began again her ceaseless work of growth. Begin again, I begin again. You can begin again right now with God. Of the ceaseless work of growth. And because of the because by the cleansing of the senses she had lean, learned to see the reality which is shadowed by the sense world, she now by the cleansing of her will, sought to draw nearer to that eternal will, that being which life, the world of becoming, manifests and serves. Thus, by the complete sur surrender of her selfhood and, and in its wholeness, by the perfect perfecting of her love, she slid from becoming to being and found her true life hidden in God. Yet the course of this transcendence, this amazing inward journey, was closely linked first and last with the processes of human life. It sprang from that life as man springs from the sod. You know, God made Adam out of the earth, Adam and Eve, because Eve came out of Adam from the earth. We were even able to describe it under those symbolic formula, which we are accustomed to call the laws of natural world. By an extension of these formula, their logical application, we discovered a path which led us without a break from the sensible to the suprasensible, from the apparent to absolute life. There's nothing unnatural about the absolute of the mystics, about God, right? That's absolute is with a capital A. He sets the rhythm of his own universe and comforts, uh, conforms to the harmonies which he has made. We deliberately seeking for that which we suppose to be spiritual too often overlook that which alone is real with capital R. The true mysteries of life accomplished themselves so softly with so easy and assured a grace, so frank an acceptance of our breeding, striving, dying and unresting world that the unimaginative natural man all agog for the marvelous is hardly startled by their daily and radiant revelation of infinite wisdom and love. Yet this revelation presses incessantly upon us. Only the hard crust of surface consciousness conceals it from our normal sight. In some least expected moment, right? Like this whole hour, right? A little over an hour. Um, in some least expected moment, the common activities of life and progress, that reality in which, in whom the mystics dwell, slips through our closed doors and suddenly we see it at our side. It was said of the disciples at Emmaus, then some, it's, okay, anyway, it's, it's a bunch of Latin, okay, so maybe she'll translate it. It's right here if you want to translate the Latin for us in the comments. Um, in, uh, in scripture, secra, okay. So to, um, anyway, cognizant, something cognizant. So too for us, the transcendent life for which we crave is revealed and are, are living within it not on some remote and arid plane of being in the cunning of explanations of philosophy, but in the normal acts of our dineural experience suddenly made significant for us, not in the backwaters of existence, not amongst subtle arguments and occult doctrines, not in those, but in all those places where the direct and simple life of earth goes on. It is found in the soul of man. So long as that soul is alive and growing, it is not found in any sterile place, right? This fact of experience is our link with the mystics, our guarantee of the truthfulness of their statements, the supreme importance of their adventure, their closer contact with reality. The mystics on their part are our guarantee of the end towards which the eminent love, with capital I and L, the hidden steersman which dwells in our midst is moving, our lovely forerunners on the path towards the real. Um, Lucas Nelson has a book, some, I mean, he has a band called something, I don't know what it's called, something of the real, Willie Nelson's son. He kept showing up on my Twitter too, I don't, or X, whatever. Anyway, I don't know why, I just trust God. Um, but this is the real real, right? Anyway, um, is that his name? 
Yeah, that's his name. I don't even remember what he looks like. It's so weird. He's just part of my heart because he said something about entering your heart and 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 performing from there, being, playing your song, you're not performing, and then you won't be nervous anymore. And it's really helped me. He said it in an interview because I was just looking up a song lyrics one time and I don't know how he came up and where the interview came up, but anyway, they come back to us from an encounter with life's most august secret. As Mary came running from the tomb, filled with amazing tidings. He did a video and I was like, who is that? I didn't even know that was him. So now I see his face, but that was, just, anyway, um, that was, it was a miracle. His, all his instruments got recovered. I'm like, that's a miracle of God. God, we pray for it in time, even though that was back in time, we pray that you um, recover his musical instruments for him and his band so that he can perform your love. In Jesus name, amen, right? God is above time, so we can pray now for things in the past. I do it. I do it. Not all the time, but they come back to us from an encounter with life's most august secret. As Mary came running from the tomb, Mary Magdalene, right? Filled with amazing tidings, which they can hardly tell, right? They thought were made up. Of course. That's okay. Not of course. I don't want to be bitter. Oh, God, give all the men wisdom to trust the women that bring back stories of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. We, longing for some assurance, the sun just shines on my face right now, it came up from the clouds. Uh, we, longing for some assurance and seeing their radiant faces. Wow, their radiant faces, right? What? I can't, I didn't read ahead. Urge them to pass on their revelation if they can. It is the old demand of the dim sighted and the incredulous. De nobis Maria, quid vidisti in via. Something in life. I, I wish. I knew that, but she didn't write it. Someone write that for us. D I E something, Maria, tell us. But they cannot say; can only report fragments of the symbolic vision. Anglicos testis sudarium et vestis. Not the inner content, the final divine certainty. We must ourselves follow in their footsteps if we would have that. If you want to have the the knowing that the know that you know that you know. Like the story of the cross, so too the story of man's spirit ends in a garden, in a place of birth, in the fruitfulness of beautiful and natural things. Divine fecundity is its secret existence, not for its own sake, but for the sake of a more abundant life. It ends with the coming forth of divine humanity, never again to leave us, living in us and with us, a pilgrim, a worker, a guest at our table, a sharer at all hazards in life, the mystic's witness I'm just thinking I have to fly like Gandalf's horse <laughs> like um, in the in the Lord of the Rings, right? He gets a special horse that flies like the wind in order to get back. The mystic witness to this story, waking very early, they have run on before us, urged by the greatness of their love. We, incapable as yet of this sublime encounter, looking in their magic mirror, listening to their stammered tidings, may see far off the consummation of the race, according to the measure of their strength, and of their passion, these, the true lovers of the absolute, have conformed here and now to the utmost test of divine sonship, the final demands of life. They have not shrunk from the sufferings of the cross. They have faced the darkness of the tomb, beauty and agony alike have called them, alike have awakened a heroic response. For them, the winter is over. Winter is over, right? Aslan has come. When he shakes his mane, it will be spring again. <laughs> when, when he bares his teeth, winter meets its death. It'll be Christmas. Like I was saying from the line that went to the wardrobe earlier, and I didn't know why I was quoting it. When Aslan came, the white witch was over, and Father Christmas could come through and give them gifts. Christmas happened. <laughs> <laughs> for them the winter is over the time of the singing of the birds has come birds in the sky sing their songs to you trees in the field lift their arms to you I want to sing I want to lift my arms to you thank you for sharing this moment with me <laughs> with me and you and God <laughs> I pray these moments for you don't just live vicariously through me. I encourage you. <laughs> the time of the singing of the birds has come. I can't make this up, right? 
from the deeps of the dewy garden, life, new, unquenchable, and ever lovely, comes to meet them with the dawn. And then there's something really beautiful in Latin that I can't read for us. I'll put that here. Someone, please translate that for us. All right, look, appendix. I love you with the love of Christ. I wish you so much love. Bye.